A bat. A wolf's head. A crab. Death. Death. I have the results of your MRI scans. Everything seems to be normal. There is no physical damage from the accident. However, I am worried about your psychological condition. I know it's not easy, but you've got to start over, Ethan. You're not responsible for what happened. It's my fault Jason is dead. He'd still be alive if I'd been looking out for him. It was an accident. Accidents happen every day. You can't blame yourself forever for your son's death. How is Sean? He's a very solitary kid, you know, very focused within himself. He's really close to his mother. With me, he's more distant. And what about you, Ethan? What do you feel? I feel sort of anesthetized, as if none of this was real. Sometimes I tell myself this whole thing is just a nightmare and that I'll wake up at any moment. Is there something else you wanted to tell me, Ethan? I sometimes have these blackouts times when I don't know what I'm doing. I recover consciousness sometime later, but I'm someplace else, and I have no idea how I got there. Do you think this could be related to the accident? You suffered a massive concussion and were in a coma for six months. We really don't know what effect a shock like that can have on the brain. That's the end of this session, and we'll continue this conversation next week. You were lucky, Ethan. It's very rare to survive such a traumatic accident. I don't exactly feel lucky, Doctor. Something the matter, Sean. No, I'm all right. How did things go at school today? The teacher yelled at me for being late again. She's gonna send me home the next time it happens. I'm sorry about that, Sean. Next time, we'll really pull it together, okay? Aren't you going to go play with the other kids? I don't feel like it. Do you want to eat something? A boomerang? You know how to use it? No, not really. I can never make it come back. Can I give it a try?
You did it, Dad. Do you want to give it a try? I won't be able to do it. Oh, come on. Let's try it together. Now, the main thing is to get the right position at the beginning. Now, you've got to throw it straight and a little to the right. Now, throw it! I did it! I did it, Dad! Good job, Sean! See? That wasn't so hard. I haven't been on a seesaw in a long time. What do you think? Yeah! Come on, Dad! Make me fly! <laughs> what about that merry-go-round? I bet I can push you so fast you won't be able to stay on it. Great! <laughs> Whoa, I think my head is spinning. <laughs> Good training for astronauts, though. <laughs> Looks like rain's coming. I think we better go. Okay. Hey, Dad, can I have a ride on the carousel? Can I? Sure. Go pick a horse and get on. I'll get a ticket. One, please. That's a dollar.
Do you think it's gonna take long? No, he should be finished soon. I'm off, Charlene. I'll look at the reports later. I'll cancel all appointments for this afternoon. Okay. Oh, Captain. Agent Norman Jaden from the FBI is here. Jaden, of course. We've been expecting you. I'm in a bit of a hurry. Do you mind tagging along? We can talk as we walk. Yeah, of course. I wanted to introduce myself before getting started, but uh, perhaps there's a better no, time. No, no, it's fine. I just have to get to the press conference. We have them every day now. Believe me, it's not always easy finding something to tell them. Fortunately, today we have some news. Have you met Lieutenant Blake yet? Yeah, we met this morning. He has his own methods, but he's a good cop. I'm sure you'll get him well together. Do you know how to tie a knot in a necktie? I guess. To be frank with you, I could have done without the FBI on this one, but the press are all over us. This origami killer case crept up on us, and it's fast becoming a national concern. There are hundreds of killers in this country, but what do you know? This guy is exotic. He leaves flowers and origami figures. Work that one out. Then the press get onto it, and we suddenly become the center of the universe. I'm here to arrest a serial killer. With all due respect, sir, the rest of it, it's none of my business. No, oh, of course not. All I'm asking is that you make progress, and fast. The press want a perpetrator, and we're gonna have to serve him up on a silver platter. Hmm. Not bad. Oh, go see Charlie and she'll show you to your office. Yeah, check in on the press conference if you're interested. It'll give you an idea of the political climate around here. Thank you, sir. Welcome to the club, Jaden. I'm ready to start. Maybe we should kick off by talking about the case? I have some work to finish here. Let's talk about that later, if you don't mind. Okay. Uh, no problem. Just let me know when you're available. Nice watch. Oh, it's the present we offer to our new lieutenants. We bought the same model each year for the past 20 years for each promotion. It optimizes everybody's time, and it's the kind of thing that always goes down well. You can contribute to our fund if you like, or still a few dollars short. Congratulate Larry on my behalf. I'll be sure to do that, sir. Captain Perry said you could show me to my office? Yes, of course. Follow me. This... this is my office? That's where I was told to take you. If you need anything, you know where to find me. Okay, time to work.
Step one, change the office. This car is probably a Chevrolet Malibu 83. No prints or specific clues. Hmm. Nothing much to go on. Just one origami store in town. Hmm, a common species. That doesn't help much. The orchid is a common species. It can be found at any flower shop. Eight victims in the last three years. All boys, aged between nine and 13. No signs of violence. The victims disappear from public places in broad daylight. No one notices anything. Bodies are found three to five days later, drowned in rainwater. There's always a railroad line adjacent to where the bodies are found. And all the victims disappeared in the fall. The killer has a large comfort zone. He gained confidence rapidly and moved away from his base. Hmm, this won't make the geoprofiling any easier. Always the same ritual. An origami in the hand, an orchid on the chest. The victims have always been dead for less than six hours when they were found, which means they remained alive for several days before being drowned. Over 3,500 people questioned. Over 100 suspects interrogated. Not a single lead to go on. The killer is white, aged between 30 and 45. He is intelligent, calm, and determined. An organized type. He has a car. He's probably employed, but his work allows him free time.
Here we go again. I better go wash my face. I need to take some. I'm gonna faint if I resist. It's all right. I know I can make it. I know. I know I can make it. Is everything all right, sir? No one. No one will see. This is Lieutenant Blake, Mr. Marsh. Could you please tell him what happened? It, it was this afternoon. I went to the park with my son, Sean. We played together for a while, and then he wanted to go on the carousel, so I put him on one of the wooden horses, and when I turned back, Sean had disappeared. Exactly what time did you arrive at the park? Try to remember exactly, Mr. Mars. Every detail can be important. It must have been about... Four fifteen. Yeah, that's it. Four fifteen. I remember exactly because I looked at the clock in the park when we arrived. What was your son wearing when he disappeared? He was wearing a coat. A beige coat. And a pair of pants. Green pants. How could Sean have disappeared without you even noticing? Weren't you right by the carousel? I, I did. I I didn't leave. I watched the carousel. How could Sean and possibly have vanished if you were right there watching the carousel? I don't know. I don't understand. You say you took your son to the park after school, but you didn't report him missing until 8.15. Why did it take you so long to contact the police? I searched the whole neighborhood for him. I, I thought he couldn't have gone far. Did Sean have any particular difficulties, Mr. Mars? Anything that might have caused him to run away? Uh, no. No, I don't think so. Everything okay at school? Any particular problems between you and your wife? Uh, my wife and I have been separated for the last six months. But Sean would not have gone off without telling his mother or me. All right. That's all the questions I have for now. You're free to go, Mr. Mars. We'll continue to look for Sean overnight. We'll contact you if we have any more questions. Do... Do you think the origami killer... Listen, your son's probably just run off and he'll turn up in a couple hours. But what if it is the origami killer? Well, then we have about four days to find him alive. Do they... Do they think it's the origami killer? It, it, it's still too early to say... 
But it is a possibility. What happened, Ethan? How could you lose Sean like that? You should never have taken your eyes off him. I mean, for God's sake, how hard is it to keep your eye on a child in the park? Why did you leave him, Ethan? Why? Wasn't it enough losing Jason? I'm sorry. That's not what I meant to say. Good evening. Good evening to you, sir. Can I help you, sir? Well, I hope so. My name's Scott Shelby. I'm a private detective. Uh, I'm investigating the case of the origami killer. I I'd like to ask you a few questions. My son is dead, Mr. Shelby. I have nothing more to say. I also lost someone I loved. I know what you're feeling. Then you will understand that I do not wish to talk about it. The killer has kidnapped another victim. A ten-year-old boy. Like your son, Risa. I have four days before we find his body on a deserted stretch of wasteland. No one did anything to save my son. Now, you would please to move along, sir. Oh, do you sell inhalers? I'm all out, and at least I won't go away completely empty-handed. In the back of this door, to the right. Thanks. Good evening, sir. Are you looking for something in particular? Give me what you got in the register. Don't fucking try anything. Open the register, you dumb fuck. Put the money on the counter. Shit, are you deaf or what? Are you gonna open that fucking register or not? No, sir. You do not have the right to steal that money from me. I have worked very hard to earn it. You cannot have it. What did you say? You're out of your fucking mind, man! You don't get it, do you? I'm gonna put a fucking bullet right between your eyes if you don't do what I say now! You shall not be robbing my register, sir. That money is mine. I ask you now to leave before it is too late. Christ! Goddamn idiot! Open the register! Turn around. Don't make me fucking kill you! Don't turn around. No, sir. That I cannot... <coughs> Punk. Didn't give me any choice. Thousand thank you, sir. I don't know what would have happened if you had not been here. Well, this I didn't come by for nothing. Have a nice day. When my boy, Razor, disappeared, I received a letter with a locker ticket inside. Inside the locker, I found this box. I do not understand what it means, but I think it must be a sort of message from the man who took my son from me. Can I? Please, take the box if it can be of any use to you at all. It did not help me to save Reza. But maybe it will help you find the other little boy.
Mr. Shelby. I was beginning to think that there was no good to be found in this place. I can see now that I was wrong. Goddamn insomnia. I'm totally exhausted, but I just can't sleep. A hot drink is what I need. Two forty seven AM. Always the same time. Hot shower. That'll create the magic of sleep. I really need sleep. How hard can it be to fall asleep?
I swear that shadow just moved. It's freaking me out. Girl, get a grip. The door's locked tight and you're home alone. There's someone here. There's someone in the apartment. The phone on the desk. I could call for help. The front door. It's the only way out. If I can reach it, I still have a chance. <laughs> 